Wednesday Wanderers, it's Ranger Erin, and today's wonder is about chicory and dandelions. Now I'm sure that you have seen lots of dandelions in your life because they grow everywhere that people are. So they are uh, kind of an everywhere type of flower. Uh, but chicory maybe you haven't noticed as much or you probably noticed it but didn't know the name of it. It's going to be growing along roadsides just like dandelion but it's going to be this blue flower. So chicory and dandelion are not from North America, so they are not native to this area. And a lot of people like to call them weeds, and weeds is just kind of a big term that means any plant that you don't want there. So especially gardeners and grass lovers, folks that are going to be tending to their lawns, they're going to say that dandelions and chicory are weeds, and they are a plant that they don't want around. So they kind of have this bad reputation that are not a lot of people like dandelions and not a lot of people like chicory. But it has kind of a history here. So like I said, it's not from North America, but it's all over North America. So these dandelions and this chicory, they were brought here by European settlers. And they were lovingly cared for on the ships brought over here because they were so cherished. So this is thinking about folks that might be moving and they might have very little stuff with them, but they chose to bring dandelions and chicory seeds because they were so precious. So to these settlers, these dandelions and chicory, they were used for traditional medicines, they were used for their own food, they were used uh, as forage for livestock. So this was a really important couple of plants to them that they brought over and they made sure that they could bring them over. So it's kind of funny to think that these plants that everybody's like, those are no good, they're weeds, uh, but they were actually brought here very lovingly. So I did say that they're non-native, but most folks kind of agree that they're not invasive either. So that word invasive means that a plant that didn't, isn't actually native to this area was brought here from somewhere else, but then it's harmful to the other plants and animals that might be around it. But in most places, these dandelions and these chicory are not gonna be harmful to the other plants around them because what they do is they grow in the places that other plants can't even handle. So they're gonna be doing really well on the sides of roads. They're gonna do really well in our cities and all of these places that maybe there's not a lot of good stuff in the soil and they're gonna do great. That's kind of why they like our gardens and why they like our lawns and the sides of the roads and even some tiny little crack in the asphalt. That dandelion's gonna say, I've got it, I'm gonna grow there. And these other plants, just can't handle that bad soil in those bad places. So what they're doing, growing in these bad places, they're actually gonna be providing food where no other flowers can. So all of our pollinators are gonna be able to get, stop off of the dandelion, stop off of that chicory. They're gonna be able to get some food on that roadside where maybe no other flowers can get it. So any plant that can kinda of grow where all the other plants can't grow, I've got a lot of respect for us because that's kind of a survivor if you think about it. When you're looking for chicory, you're going to be looking for some bright blue flowers that have a ton of petals around a yellow center and they kind of have almost a tattered edge to them. They might be long and tall and skinny and don't really have very big leaves. Our dandelion, everybody knows that bright yellow, tons and tons of petals on there. Really no kind of obvious center to it. The whole thing just looks like one big yellow blob. And then it's got these great leaves that are serrated, toothy all over. And like I said, these are survivors. So this plant has been mowed down several times and is still managing to grow in this spot. So really great survivor plant. Today's activity is going to be flower pressing. So after you find your dandelion, after you find your chicory, we're gonna make flower pressings of these plants. So flower pressing, you know, has a big history in crafting, but it has its roots in science. So scientists were the first folks that were collecting these and they were doing it so that they could preserve this plant and they could look back at it and they could study it. So all of our botanists out here, they would be definitely doing sketches of their plants, 
before photography. They didn't even have the choice of photography. They're still taking photographs of them. But even today, the best way to preserve that plant is to use the actual plant because nothing else can capture all the details of the plant. After you've found your plant, we're gonna be cutting it off at the base. So we don't wanna just get the flower because again, we're not just crafting, we're doing science here. But you're gonna try and get the um, leaves, at least a few of the leaves as well. So cutting it off down at the base. If you're really uh, eager to get the whole plant, you're welcome to try and dig it out as well. But you're gonna find that they have really long tap roots that are gonna be very difficult to get all the way out. So maybe just grabbing the leaves and the flower. Once you have all of your plants, you're gonna take them inside. You're gonna need a couple of pages of really thick paper and some nice heavy books. And on your paper, make sure, since this is about science, we're all about writing down notes about what we found. We're gonna make sure that we write the name of our plant, dandelion, where you found it. I found this one in Poplick Park. And then when did you find it? So I found this on July 16th. And you're gonna take your plant. It's okay if it's a little wilted, that definitely happens. If you've been walking out, especially in the heat, you're going to lay it down flat on your paper. Try and get all of it to be on the paper. And you want to try and arrange it so that most of those leaves are going to be facing forward. They're going to be facing the front. And even that flower is going to be facing the front. Once you get it arranged how you like it, You're gonna take that second piece of paper and you're gonna place it right on top of it. And then add your heavy books. And we're gonna let these sit for at least three days, maybe even a whole week. Come back and check on it at that point. And it's been a few days. So we'll just go ahead and take a peek. And that looks fully dried. <clears throat> so in those places that it looks like it's popping up, just gonna put a few dabs of glue. There we go. We've got our record of our dandelion. All right, well, thanks for joining me this week, and I will catch you all next time.